In this video, I'm going to take you through a plain JavaScript example using Redux. Now it's going to be a nice and simple example, and we're going to take a lot of time to explain exactly what's going on. We've learned the three fundamentals, and we're going to see how these three fundamentals are used in Redux in this example. I'm going to take you through exactly how we use actions, reducers, and our state, which is our store. And we're going to see all the methods you need in order to use Redux with plain JavaScript. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to make a simple Redux application with just plain JavaScript. As I said, it's going to be nice and simple. And we're going to take things slowly and explain exactly what's going on. So let's get started. So I have an index.html set up here. And in this HTML document, I am including the Redux library via a script tag in the head of the document. Now I will provide this script URL in the comments below and I will provide the GitHub repository for this code if you want to follow along. I then have a style sheet to make it look a bit nicer. I then have some HTML here. So I have a header one for a counter. So that's gonna be our number. I then have three buttons, an add, a minus and a reset button. I then have a JavaScript file linked here as well called counter.js, which is obviously going to have all my Redux code in it. Before we go any further, let's just recap about a Redux application. So we have the UI, which I'll show you in just a second. We have our actions, which as you remember, are just a simple JavaScript object with a type and a payload. We dispatch actions to a reducer the reducer does something to that action and it then passes it to our store. Our store then passes our state to our UI. Now in the last video, this box here was actually called state. And the reason it's changed is because actually in Redux, our state, our single JavaScript object that contains our application's data, that single source of truth is actually contained within a store. And it's our store that updates the UI. It does pass state to the UI, but it's a store that contains state. And you'll see this in a second. So just remember that we have a store that contains our state. So let's go ahead and check out the UI. So this is the simple UI. We've just got three buttons and a count. And obviously when we click on a button, we are going to do something to our count. So let's go ahead and start with our actions. So in our counter.js, let's just recap what an action is. So an action is obviously just a JavaScript object that has a type. And we're going to have a type of add, which is obviously going to add to our count. Now, actions are just payloads of information that send data from our application to our store. Now you'll notice in this diagram, our actions actually get sent to our reducer. Now this is kind of technically incorrect, but technically correct. So what actually happens is in a Redux application, in our store, we have a reducer. So our reducer is within our store. So our actions, get sent to our store, which has the reducer. So they get sent to the reducer, which is within the store. So this diagram does make sense and it is kind of how it works. This action will actually get sent to the store and from the store, it will get sent to the reducer. And we'll see why that happens in a second. So now we've got an action, let's go ahead and create our reducer. I'm just gonna add a comment here. So we've got our actions. So let's write our reducer. As you remember, reducers are pure functions and they are just simple switch statements. So let's go ahead and create a function called counter and this is gonna be our reducer. Now, hopefully you remember that a reducer takes two arguments. It takes our current application state and it takes an action obviously the action that gets dispatched. And reducers are again, 
as I said before, simple switch statements. And we switch on the action.type. So we're going to switch on the type of add. So let's replace that with add. And we are, of course, going to do something in that case statement, but we'll come back to that in a second. So now essentially we have our reducer. So actions describe when something is happening and reducers specify exactly how that action is going to change our application state. So now we have a reducer and an action. So the next thing we need to do is have a store. So a Redux store is an object that brings actions and reducers together. Now stores in Redux have a few responsibilities. They hold our application state, as I mentioned. They also allow us access to that application state, so that single source of truth. They allow our state to be updated and they have listeners which will listen for actions, for changes. So let's go ahead and create a store. So I'm gonna define a variable called store, and that is going to equal Redux. So that's the Redux object that I've imported via this script here. And on that Redux object, there's a method called create store. This method create store takes two arguments that we're interested in. It takes three, but we'll ignore the third one for now. So the first argument is the reducer. So in our case, that's gonna be our counter function. So let's go ahead and pass in that reducer. The second argument it takes is state. So it's kind of the initial state, our preloaded state. Let's just go ahead and create a new variable for that state. And of course, it's an object. This is that single source of truth that I've been talking about so often. And this object is just gonna have a count property and we'll set that to zero. We'll then go ahead and pass in that state object to our store. So we now have a reducer, a store, and an action. So we now need to start to wire them all together. If you look at the diagram, we have the four elements now, but we don't really have these arrows. There's no connection between the four elements. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to have a handler on our actions. So let's go ahead and do that using documents dot get element by ID of add. So that's just gonna get this button here. On this button, we're gonna go ahead and add an add event listener. Listener. And this is just gonna listen for a click event. And we're gonna pass in a callback to this event. So whenever we click on the add button, we are gonna call this callback. So let's just go ahead and log out our object, shall we? Just so we can see what's happening there. So open up your developer tools, refresh the page, open up the console and click add. So we get our object back. So every time we click on that, we have an event listener. So now we have an event listener, we actually need to dispatch that action. So this event listener here is our handler, our handler that is gonna emit actions. And as I mentioned, we dispatch actions. So let's go ahead and dispatch an action. So let's dispatch that action of type add. The dispatch action actually lives on a store, on our Redux store. So go ahead and prepend that with store. So we now have our action and we are now dispatching that action and we're dispatching it to our store. So remember when I said that that diagram, how we don't actually dispatch actions to our reducer, we dispatch them to our store. This is what I meant. So you notice our store, this store here, which has our reducer dispatches actions. And you know what, let's go ahead and actually console.log out this store. 
so we can see exactly what it is. So save that, head on back over to Chrome, refresh, and we'll get our object. This is our store, and you can see we've got a dispatch action. And that is obviously what we are calling to dispatch our actions. We can now actually go ahead and see our action being dispatched to our counter. So in our case for add, we can go ahead and log out our action. So if you add a log statement for our action in the add section, save that, head on back over to the browser, refresh, click add, and you'll see you get the object with the type add. So you get our action, which is what we'd expect. So we now have actions being dispatched to our store and they are going into our reducer, which is what we expect and what we want to happen. The next thing and sort of the last thing we are missing is our store subscribing to changes in our state. So at the moment we can dispatch actions to our reducer and within our reducer we can do stuff to our actions, but beyond that, there's nothing else we can do in our application. We need to have the ability to react to changes in our state. And the way we listen for changes in our state is using a method called subscribe. So go ahead and on our store, let's subscribe. Now the subscribe method takes a single argument and it takes a listener. And this listener is a callback, which is gonna be invoked any time an action gets dispatched. So let's just go ahead and create a callback. We'll call this one render and we'll separate it from the, the subscribe. We'll bring it out here and just create a separate function called render. And it takes no arguments. And all we're gonna do here is just gonna log out that we are in render. So what's happening here is our store, which is now subscribed to any changes. So any time an action happens and there might be a change, our store is subscribed to this function. So whenever we get a change or potentially get a change, this render function is gonna get called. So we'll see that in a second. So go ahead and save that and head on back over to your browser and refresh. Click on add again and you'll see we get the object, the action type, and we get in render appear in the console as well. So we get our action and then we get in render. So you can see anytime an action happens and it goes into our reducer, we get our callback called, our render function called. So our render function gets called anytime an action is dispatched. And if you think about that, it makes sense. So we only want to call render when an action happens. So when an action gets dispatched and we assume something has changed within our state, we want to call that callback. Now in that callback is where we are going to render our new state to the UI. But before we do that, we need to update our switch statement to actually change something. Because at the moment it is just console.logging our action. So in our reducer, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new object called next state. And this object is gonna have a count. And this count is gonna equal current state dot count. The reason I'm creating this new object is because we don't mutate our state. We don't change that state object directly. We create a new object and return that new object. Because remember, our reducer is a pure function. Now in our add case, we can go ahead and set our next state dot count to equal our current state dot count plus one. So once we've added one to the count, we can go ahead and return that next state object, that single source of truth. Now, if we have an action that we don't know how to deal with, perhaps we have a minus action and we don't have a case for that action yet. We just wanna return our current state because we don't wanna have anything change. 
that we don't know what it is and we've not dealt with explicitly ourselves. So with our add case dealt with, we can now go ahead and get that state and log it out in our render function. So this render function is essentially where we're gonna get our new state and pass it to our UI. But for now, I'm just gonna log out that state object, that single source of truth. And on our store, because remember I said our state is on our store, our store has a get state function. And this function will simply return that state object. So if you go ahead and save that and head on over to your browser, refresh and click add, we get an error. Cannot read count of undefined. So I think that is because I'm not returning our default state. So let's just return, obviously missed the return keyword there. Return our current state, our default state back onto Chrome, refresh, and now if we click add, we get our count. So we get plus one, plus two, plus three, etc. So you can see there that we now have the case where we dispatch an add action and we get a new state returned. And that new state has one added to it. Now you might be a bit confused as to why we have to return the current state in the default because when we click add, we're going to the add case, aren't we? Rather than the default case. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna log that we are in default. Because what actually happens is if you refresh, you'll notice that we get in default before we get our store object. So what actually happens here is Redux actually calls a sort of a, a blank action to get our initial state. And we'll see more about this in the next video when we have some, some best practices about this. But essentially what it's doing is it is just returning its default state to start off with. So it's returning the current state, this object to start off with. So when we didn't return this and we click the add button, we didn't have a current state. It was nothing because we didn't return it. So that just kind of initializes our state. The final thing we need to do to actually get our state to the UI is of course, render it to the UI. So if we go ahead in our index.html and we notice we've got the H1 with the ID of counter. So let's go ahead and grab that element. So counter L equals document dot get element by ID of counter. So that gives us that counter element. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get that value from our single source of truth from our single JavaScript object. So let's go ahead and grab the val so it's going to be store dot get state, and that is going to grab our object. And it's probably not a good idea to call it val. Let's call it state because we're actually getting the entire object rather than the value. Now we've got that state object. We can go ahead and on our counter element, we can set the inner HTML to equal our state dot count and we'll set that to a string. So what this should do is obviously grab our counter element, grab our header one, grab our state object and then get the count property, set it to a string and then pass it into that element as the inner HTML. So go ahead and save this, head on back over to your browser, refresh, so move that down a little bit and click add. And now you see that our counter increments by one. We've added one to it. So we now have a simple working Redux application. Obviously, we can only handle one action at the moment, and that's that add action and our default action, of course. So 
the next thing we can do is obviously we can add in the new cases. So we can add in a case for our minus button and for our reset button. Now this is where it gets really easy with Redux. So we've done a lot of initial setup to get to this stage and to get our Redux application handling a single action. But to add another action is relatively easy. So the first thing we need to do obviously is create a listener for our minus button. We then add an event listener looking for a click on that button and we then pass it a callback function. And in this callback function, of course, we dispatch our action. And of course, this is gonna be of type minus. The next thing we need to do in our switch statement is to simply create a new case. So create a minus case. We then simply need to get our next state dot count and set that to our current state dot count minus one and simply return our next state. So that should give us the ability to handle a minus action now. So let's add three and now we can minus as well. So you can see there that within 30 seconds or so, we've been able to add a new action in really quickly, really easily. Let's just recap exactly what's happened here and exactly what is going on. So we obviously have our UI and we have our buttons. We then have our handlers for the click events on our buttons. When we have a click event happen, we dispatch an action to our store which we created here. When we create a store, we simply pass in a reducer and the current state, so our initial state, in our case, a count of zero. When an action gets dispatched, it goes to our store. Our store then passes it to our reducer, which takes our current state and our action. Within our reducer, we have a switch statement that does something depending on the type of action we pass. In our reducer, we create a new state object because we don't want to mutate our current state because we have a pure reducer, a pure function. So we create that new state object. And then in our case statements, we update that new object, that new state, and we simply return it. We then subscribe our store to a render function. When we subscribe our store to a function, to a callback function, this render function here, it gets called every time an action gets dispatched. So anytime our action gets dispatched, so anytime we click a button on our UI, it goes to the reducer, the reducer does something, and then our store calls this render function. And in our render function, we simply get our state object. So we get our single source of truth, that single JavaScript object, and we then extract the count value from that object and set our header in a HTML to equal that new count. So if we look at our diagram, we now know exactly what's going on here. So our UI emits a handler event to our action which dispatches an action to our store, and realistically it's to our reducer. So whenever an action is called, it gets sent to our reducer, which does something to our state, returns a new state, and our store is listening for those action changes. And when one happens, it calls a callback that is subscribed to that store. And in that render function, we update our UI. So it is actually relatively simple. Once you actually understand what's going on, we have our listeners, we subscribe our callback store, we create our store and we have our reducer. And as you saw, once you've got it all set up, it's really easy to add in new actions. So let's go ahead and add in the final action, which is gonna be our reset. So I'm just gonna copy our minus action because it's pretty much the same 
replace this with reset change the action type to reset and that gives us our handler and our action dispatch in our case statement I can go ahead and copy our minus case change it to reset and in our reset all we're going to do is set the next state's count to equal zero and then we simply return that next state go ahead and save refresh the browser let's add some numbers let's take a few away and let's reset so again once you've got it all set up once you've got your reducer set up once you've got your store set up adding actions is really easy it's really simple so in the next video we are going to quickly redo what we've done we're going to do it again really quickly to show you exactly how easy it is and we're going to talk about some of the best practices that you should use for redux before we move on to some of the more advanced redux topics and then move on to using redux with react so if you like this video don't forget to subscribe like and comment